Hello everyone and welcome to this video. It's the second in this uh... Hello everyone and welcome to this video and introduction to the lead derivative part two. Now this video deals with how to find expressions for the lead derivative for functions and vectors. In particular, it'll look at um, how we can arrive at the forms of the lead derivative of a smooth function f with respect to the vector field x and the lead derivative of some vector y with respect to some vector x. All right, that's the purpose. That's what we're having a look at. Let's make a start then and uh, put that up there. All right, so in the last video, we came up with this uh, form here. This is the definition of the um, lead derivative of y with respect to x. It's the limits t approaches zero of the pullback of y at the point p uh, minus y at the point p initially divided by t in the limits t approaches zero. Okay, and that gives us our lead derivative. Now, what we want to do in this video is we want to find a form for the lead derivative of some smooth function f in the direction of the vector field x. We want to show this, this using this definition. And then can we generate the form, um, can we show how, for instance, the lead derivative of the vector field y with respect to the vector field x is this commutator or this form here. How do we end up with this? Can we generate an argument that takes us from this uh, to give us this and to give us this? And that's the point of the video. So I'll make an argument for both, okay? Now, before we start, um, phi subscript t asterisk of y denotes the pullback by the flow phi t. It describes how objects are pulled back from time t to time zero. So I felt I needed after the last video to clear that up. Whereas if you wanted to use phi minus t asterisk of y, putting a y in here, that would denote the pullback by the inverse flow phi minus t. It describes how objects are pulled back uh, with the inverse flow from time zero to time minus t. So there's a difference between those two there. Uh, you could also represent this phi minus t asterisk by this object here. It's clearly with the negative one that indicates the uh, inverse. All right, so let's move on. Remember, we want to find an argument in this video for how we can go from here to this for scalar function or this for two vectors. All right, so we have here our uh, manifold, M. We have a flow line just picked out, just choose one. Remember the vector field X that's on this manifold generates these flow lines. This vector, these fl the vector X is tangent to the flow lines. All right, here's a point P picked. And in uh, local coordinates, you could say this flow line is X alpha of T. Now let's start with some manifold M with a general point P indicated on it. Here we are. Let's say there is some vector field X on our manifold. Okay. The vector X generates the flow line along with others. This one, only one here shown in red for you. Um, but this is the subject of the video prior to the last video prior to this. So second last video. Flow field of vectors is what it's called. All right, so let's um, a manifold again, but this time the point P, which is phi zero of P at T equals zero, vector field X, flow line, uh, phi t of p at some other time greater than zero, here's our point. Now, this phi t of p, it gives you a point on the manifold, okay? Gives you a point. So the flow map phi t, that maps m to itself, represents how points on the manifold m move under the influence of the vector field x. For each fixed t, phi t of p gives the position of the point p after flowing along x for time t. All this was covered in the last two videos. At t equals zero, the flow map phi zero is the identity map, phi zero of p equals p. All right. And it keep going. Let's move on. So here's our manifold M. Here's our flow line. Uh, now we have a scalar uh, function, the smooth function F acting on the manifold. All right. So at this point here, the value of the scalar function is F of p. At this point here is F of phi t of p. All right. So in local coordinates, we can replace this phi t of p with x mu of t, okay? Uh, in, uh, in some local coordinate system we could set up. Right? And that's how you, um, the equation of these lines and these flow lines are given by these. Mu will go from one to up to the dimension of the manifold. So we want to find 
the um, lead derivative of this function, smooth function f, with respect to the vector field x, what form is it going to take? That's what we want to look at. All right, so here we go. Uh, just note that the uh, pullback of f, phi t asterisk of f, is f composed of phi t of p, which is f of phi t of p. All right. Now, the definition for the lead derivative applied in the case to a function is the lead derivative of the smooth function f in the direction of x is the lim limit as t approaches zero of the pullback of f, phi t of p minus its starting point, uh, phi zero of p, uh, in the limit as t approaches zero. Well, that becomes the partial derivative here, um, d dt f phi zero of p. All right. And now this is where the chain rule comes in, and that becomes df d phi zero of p, um, d phi zero of p dt, remembering p is arbitrary. Um, and so d phi zero of p dt is df d phi zero of p. And remember in those local coordinates, this now can become dx mu of t dt and df dx mu of t. Now this is a tangent vector. That, that is the uh, components of the vector tangent to the flow line. So we'll call that x because that's the vector field x that is acting on the manifold. This then is df dx mu. And so what you have now is this is the definition of directional derivative. Okay. It, um, the derivative of f in the direction of x or x of f. So that's the directional derivative. Okay, and that came from this definition here. So the lead derivative of the smooth function f uh, in the direction of the, x, uh, the vector field is the directional derivative x df dx mu or x of f. All right, that's the directional derivative. Now that's handy because that might help us in the next bit as you'll see. All right, let's move that. So let's work in local coordinates x mu. The vector fields x and y can be expressed as. Remember now we want to find uh, um, a, a form. What, what is the form, the mathematical form of the lead derivative of the vector y in the direction of the vector field x? Okay. Now, so uh, the vector fields x and y can be expressed as in local coordinates x is x mu component d d x mu. These act as the basis vectors. Y is y mu components of the vector y um, basis vectors here. Now consider a function f, the lead derivative of y with respect to x applied to f is, okay, so this, this is a little bit more, this is the lead derivative of the directional derivative in the direction of y uh, in the direction of x. Okay, so we're going to use that because we already have an expression for this. Anyway, you'll see as the argument develops, um, how we're going to end up with finding the lead derivative of y with respect to x without this uh, function f acting. So first compute y of f, the directional derivative of f in the direction of y, uh, component form, that's y nu, df, dx nu. Okay, next we compute x of y of f. So x, y of f is x mu, d, dx mu, uh, y nu, df, dx nu. Okay, so expanding that out, we're going to need... Um, x mu, this one here, times, this will be dx mu y nu here, y nu dx mu times that, plus then uh, we're going to have d dx mu of df dx nu, which gives us the second derivative here, mixed partial derivative here. So we end up with x mu outside of all of it, and this here, I hope that's clear. Okay, what's happened there? Just expand it out. It's just a product rule that works. So d dx mu of y nu, that one, times this, plus y nu separately, and d dx mu of df dx nu, which gives that mixed partial derivative here. Okay, similarly now for y x of f, so y x of f is this. Okay, again, product rule again, y nu stays out here. We're gonna have dx nu d nu, d dx nu of x mu there, times this, plus, Take that out and we're going to have ddx nu times or ddx nu of df dx nu which is a mixed partial derivative here okay so we have two expressions now this one and this one let's go over okay so i'm moving myself out of there so the 
lead derivative of the directional derivative of f in the direction y with respect to the vector field x is this object here. So we're going to subtract those. Okay, we're going to subtract those. And when we do, we're going to end up for a form, we're going to end up ultimately giving us a mathematical form for the lead derivative of y on its own with respect to the active with the respect to the vector field x. That's the whole point of it. Okay, so let's subtract. Okay, now these mixed partial derivatives here are going to cancel. That one will cancel that because remember partial derivatives commute. So they, so that's the same as that. That leaves us with this term and this term. Here we go like that. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to notice how uh, you've got a new up, a new down, okay, a mu up, a mu down, and we can simply, we're free to swap those, right? We're free to label where, where you have pairs of indices, you're free to relabel them as you choose, right? Um, they're dummy indices, and because they, they sum together, we can easily replace them. So these news can swap with the, news here can swap with the mu's and become this and this. When we do that, what we find is we have a df, dx new here, df, dx new here, which can be factored out. And that's what happens here. So we're left with x mu, dy new, dx mu, minus y mu, dx new, dx mu, in parentheses, times this factor here, which is really just the scalar or inner product of x with y, the vectors x and y minus the inner product or scalar product of the vector y with the vector x and then f out front. So what we're left with now is we've got the lead derivative of the uh, directional derivative of, y of f with respect to y in the direction of y in respect of the direction of x. All right. Gives us this commutator here of f which is interesting. So just repeating the last line again we have this but that just implies that the lead derivative of the vector field y, or the vector y, with respect to the vector x, is just the commutator. So the lead derivative of y in the direction of x is just the commutator, this object here. Okay, so we've got the lead derivative of a smooth function f in the direction of x. It's just the directional derivative uh, of the function in the x direction. And for the lead derivative of a vector such as y with respect to some other vector such as x, we're just the commutator of the two. Okay, so introducing the function f when explaining the lead derivative helps to ground the abstract definition in concrete calculations and to generate an argument that leads to this. So it makes a concept more accessible and provides a clear illustration of the non commutativity of vector fields, which is essential to understand the lead derivative and lead brackets. There we go. That's what we set out to achieve and that's what we've got thank you for watching i hope you find this video uh, useful and interesting and um, i'll see you in the next video